morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Praise the Lord. We have a new day and a new opportunity to walk with him in victory. Our God has blessed us with his love. He has covered us with his son and has purchased our salvation. And we are sanctified when we walk in obedience to him. This is our opportunity to draw close to God. So if you believe, then realize that you need to draw close to him, to know him more intimately so that you can follow him in an exact detailed way, not generally walking with him, but specifically walking in his light. Before we get to the lesson, uh, which is a very, very powerful lesson, it really um, convicted me of my shortcomings. Uh, yesterday's lesson on marriage. Uh, let's, let's, let's pray. Dear Father, we come to you this morning um, realizing in a small way how blessed we are by your acceptance of us. You've accepted us to the point of paying for every mistake we make. You love us in a way that allowed you to send your son here sacrifice his life for ours. Thank you, Father. Thank you for loving and caring for us and providing for our needs. And I just ask, Father, that you enlighten us with your truth so that we might walk holy before you, choosing you over the sin and death that abounds in this earth. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the uh, daily devotional this morning is titled Sin Strained Marriage. That's from the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verses 6 through 19. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. And it says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Well, from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou were naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat? And the man said, The woman who thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shall thy go, and dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life, and I will put enmity 
between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow, and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. From thus thou art, and unto thus shalt thou return. Sin changed God's perfect plan for Adam and Eve. And of course, God knew in advance that this would happen. And he planned for it. And he planned to reconcile <clears throat> that sin. Okay, today's lesson is in section um, let's see section 2 remain pure in marriage honoring God with your body the reference is 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 18 through 20 it says flee fornication Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. The commentary says, Scripture is clear that we are to resist the devil and his temptations. See James chapter 4 verse 7, 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 9. However, there are some temptations and resultant sins so insidious and seductive that we are commanded to flee from them. Fornication is one of those. <clears throat> See 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. Fornication refers to any and all types of sexual activity outside the boundaries set by God. Sexual activity outside of marriage always brings hurt and damages the marriage, even if the offending parties think their sin is hidden. It robs the spouse of that which is uniquely and biblically his or hers. It brings guilt and shame into the covenant relationship, hindering God's perfect will for the couple and the offending spouse. Sexual immorality affects not only the emotional and spiritual aspects of a person. Paul says it is a sin against one's own self. See 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. The nature of sexual relations is such that a physical, 
emotional and spiritual union takes place when one participates with someone other than his or her spouse it brings division which violates and shatters the oneness God ordains further as God, as Paul has explained earlier in this chapter it brings the participants into spiritual slavery to sin and that was in verse 12 <clears throat> To further emphasize the sanctity of the marital relationship and the spiritual relationship we have with Christ, Paul says our physical body is the, sac is the sacred edifice or temple of the Holy Spirit who takes up residence within us. The Holy Spirit is a gift from God, not to be treated haphazardly or irrelevantly we were created to accomplish God's will and purpose not to satisfy the lust of the flesh for our selfish purposes we are clearly instructed to not mistreat God's property which has been purchased at a great price the suffering and bloodshed of Christ therefore we must celebrate who we are in Christ and celebrate him in our bodies and spirit which belong to God amen amen oneness requires total dedication if two are to become one they must be dedicated the union must be exclusive Jesus and the Father have an exclusive relationship. And we must have an exclusive relationship with our mates so that our union becomes undivisible. Nothing can penetrate it. It's safe. It's fortified. It's strong in the union because we have melted and blended together to become one flesh. Thinking of the other's needs first. That's what really struck me yesterday. That uh, challenge to think of the needs of the wife above my own. And I fall short at that. And so that's a challenge to... Um, do better in that aspect. I thank you for your time today. That's the end of this section. Uh, we'll continue, God willing, tomorrow morning. Um, be blessed and have a great day.